we are watching more and more countries that are coming into election electing new leaders and uh, with some parties losing power like what we've seen happening in the ANC of South Africa and uh, quite uh, a number of exciting exciting new uh, politicians coming on board uh, in Africa as more and more elections are being held we also see the same scenario happening in Rwanda Paul Kagame the leader of Rwanda seeks re-election once again in Rwanda and uh, the man uh, Paul Kagame is many controversies that are surrounding him as a leader of Rwanda and uh, some of these controversies are both sides you know both ways uh, he's got his positivities he's got his negativities but uh, generally speaking the man uh, is uh, doing good from the way that uh, uh, I look at it myself he is a better devil than uh, the devil that we see like happening in Zimbabwe and uh, he's doing good quite a lot for his country and uh, although he might be called a dictator uh, the CNN Africa reports that uh, voters in Rwanda lined up at polling stations on Monday to elect their next president with 65, 66-year-old incumbent Paul Kagame, who has ruled the Central African country for nearly a quarter of a century, expected to cruise to victory. So this is what is expected. Uh, Paul Kagame again earmarked for again another win. And uh, I know quite a lot of people will be wishing that uh, they could come a new leader uh, from, uh, I mean, from this election. But it seems like uh, it's not going to be uh, happening uh, like uh, as, as, as soon as now. The president of, uh, uh, of uh, Rwanda, Paul Kagame, feared and admired in equal measures. He's seeking to extend his 24-year rule in an election that analysts says, uh, say he's going to be winning again with a landslide. He has dominated every election since uh, he became president in 2000 and uh, over 90% of the vote. In 2017, there was also an election in Rwanda, and he won with a staggering 99%. Yeah, Just imagine, when you look at the figures, you can tell that <laughs> something is not right somewhere. So Mr. Kagame, who is actually 66 years old, is accused of not following any real, or I mean, allowing any real opposition and uh, ruthlessly targeting his critics, even those that are outside the country. You still remember, there was one Rwandese, uh, was killed right in Harare by some uh, people that are uh, suspected to have been coming from Rwanda that went into his house in Harare and killed the man. And uh, these are some of the issues that are uh, uh, talked about uh, so many uh, so many times. Right, he faces only two contenders who are authorized to run. Other candidates were barred by their Zek. <laughs> Zek barred other candidates and allowed only two uh, people to uh, contest two contenders who are going to be part of this. Paul Kagame has been at the helm of Rwandan politics since uh, his rebel forces took power at the end of 1994 genocide, which killed uh, over 800,000 ethnic Tutsis and uh, moderate Hutus. This is what uh, was a bad, bad uh, uh, war that happened of uh, tribes that fought so hard, so tough in Rwanda. It's just one of those uh, remembered uh, atrocities that happened. So since then, he has been praised for overseeing the country's dramatic economic revival and uh, uh, unifying the country. Indeed, this looks like uh, it's, 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 it's a good thing that is really now beginning to happen in Rwanda. Rwanda was 30 years ago uh, written off, essentially written off, uh, but thanks to some extent to the leadership of uh, Kagame and his ruling party, he has managed to build some stability. So Mr. Kagame has always fiercely defended Rwanda's record of human rights. Yeah, he always claims that human rights record is so high. And uh, about 9 million people are registered to vote in this election, according to our board. And at least 2 million are uh, first-time voters. So it's yet to see uh, what is going to be happening, especially with the new voters that are coming in. Uh, they are also going to be uh, seeing this uh, new uh, election. Uh, for the very first time, they're going to be part of this election. And it's going to be very, very exciting, especially for the new people that are coming in. Young people that are also uh, probably voting for the very first time would also be participating. So we'll be seeing uh, what will be happening. But from the look of things from uh, the past, like I've been saying, uh, the competition has really uh, not been like a competition at all. Uh, Rwanda has always had this man uh, from 1994, you know, at the helm of the politics. And uh, of course, many uh, politicians have been threatened. Some have fled the country and some have been victimized, some even killed. Uh, 
uh, uh, for participating in these political activities. Uh, when, when I look at uh, Paul Kagame and compare him with uh, Emerson Nangagwa, I think he's a better devil, he's a better dictator. Uh, because uh, if we look at uh, the economy of Rwanda, we look at infrastructure in Rwanda, we, Rwanda, we, see, we look at peace, we look at some kind of uh, reunion, uh, you know, uh, some kind of uh, forgiveness, reconciliation that has happened in the country. It has really looked like it has happened to a very great extent. So I, I would prefer to have uh, a dictator like Paul Kagame because uh, he works hard. The man works hard. You should remember, we were talking about that uh, uh, stadium, that uh, soccer stadium that was... Um, it was called what Amabulu Stadium, a very beautiful stadium that we, I, we did a show on this platform where we were talking about that beautiful stadium. And it was built by money that was uh, just about twice the amount of the God scandal uh, that was squandered in Zimbabwe by people like Mike Chimombe and Moses Zimpofe and, uh, and the like. Uh, so uh, he has also been uh, overseeing quite uh, some huge, huge, beautiful buildings, infrastructure. That have been built and he has been found to be opening up such no, no, compared to what we have seen in Zimbabwe, where you see Emerson Nangago going to open a like taps, he goes to open a bus rank, he goes to open a toilet at Kuzanai bus, bus station. Just imagine it's small, small things. He goes to open a bakery that employs 20 people and he flies all the way from Harare to, to Blawai to do that. When you look at the uh, the places where Kagame is invited himself. Uh, to open up it to be a huge kind of investment big big thing that would really make a difference in a city that indeed there is a building or whatever infrastructure that has been opened up otherwise the rest are opened by ministers or some other officials who are just uh, in the lower ranks there but in zimbabwe it seems like mnangagwa is using every platform to find himself being there so that he can continue to politic but uh, it's not working for Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe continues to go down. Zimbabwe continues to be a laughing stock of the whole world. So uh, we'll see what is going to happen in the elections of Rwanda. But of course, uh, like expected, Paul Gagame is once again going to come out victorious. And uh, I don't think the Rwandan people would uh, weep uh, uh, if this man comes out victorious again because there's been a considerable progress in, San, in, 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 a, in Rwanda. We've seen the streets, very smart streets, clean streets, we have seen uh, internet, we have seen also development in uh, roads, infrastructure, and uh, housing, especially housing also. There was a, a housing scheme that he did, this man, a beautiful, beautiful housing scheme, housing scheme that is benefiting Ru Ru the Rwandan people. So he, he, uh, I don't think really they would complain to have this man back in the office again. And, and after all, the man is not very old. He's only 66 compared to ours, who is now uh, working towards 88. That's too much. Those ones are too old. Uh, Rwanda, they still have the man. He's still quite in his, uh, his mind. He's still quite active and fresh. He can, you know, compete with uh, the developing world and uh, lead Rwanda into a proper, prosperous country. So that's what is it. Uh, let's wait and see. So the results are going to be announced, I think, around Tuesday or so. So Wednesday, somewhere there, we'll be hearing of the results of the Rwandan election. So we'll be giving you updates of what is happening around our country, our neighbors, and all over the world. Subscribe to the channel, like, and share if you have not done so. We'll meet again in the next update.